So moving on to TMNT Mutant Mayhem. So I had some notes lined up for when you finally saw it. But mm. before I get to that, what did you think? I loved it. I loved every single minute of it. It was... Th- okay, so... I went in with high expectations already because you've been hyping it up. The trailers have been hyping it up. Everyone's been hyping it up. It took my expectations and blew them out of the water. That movie was fantastic. And um, I will admit the numerous pop culture references at first threw oh, me yeah. off really bad. You're about and to, then It's crazy that you feel about it the same way I did because I also didn't like it at first, but then it grew on me. Yeah, I was like, I was like, this is this feels really weird and really forced. And then I remembered they're teenagers. Exactly. And we're I thinking that... about it through the lens of when we were teenagers. And right. even though we were cringy, we aren't sorry, Gen Alpha or whatever, or even like <laughs> super young Gen Z, like you're way cringier than we were when we were teenagers. <laughs> yep. And like I really thought about it and I was like, you know what? I was kinda like this when I was their age and I went and saw it with some high school friends. Uh so I was like yeah, no, we were like this. This is just what my friends group felt like. So after that, it felt a lot better. And I'm glad that, like, I managed to look at it from that lens rather than the, this sucks, this is cringy uh, kind of viewpoint. Because I think if I hadn't, like, taken that moment of reflection, it probably would have ruined the movie for me. I'm going to be real. <laughs> yeah, literally at the top of my notes is the Turtles are very much modern day teens. And that could sometimes be a little annoying and cringy, but I got used to it eventually. So I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that off top. But um, I should also say we're going to get into spoilers because we already had a spoiler free review. And Ayer just essentially gave their spoiler free review. So now we're going to get straight into spoilers. Um, yes. At least not immediately, but spoiler alert now because spoilers are going to come up very soon. Um, yep, yep. But yeah, uh, like you said, um, them being teens, like at first I was like, I, I'm, I didn't know how to feel about it, but I was like, they're teenagers. We weren't that far off from how they are when we were teenagers. Um, and, you know, with the pervasiveness of the internet, because like, it just, it just makes sense <laughs> that they are yeah. the way that they are. So it made yep. sense. Um, but yeah, uh, j- honestly, jumping straight into spoilers, uh, at first I wasn't a fan of the ending with the turtles going public so early. Um, mm-hmm. cause, cause I was just like, man, I like when the turtles are secret for at least a little bit before they go public. Like, I don't mind them going public eventually, but so early it's weird. But then eventually I accepted it since every version of the turtles in animation and comics have all been very different from each other. So I'm used right. to the turtles being different from iteration to iteration. So very quickly I realized, okay, this is different, but there are plenty of other t- turtles content out there for me to consume if I don't like this, which I do like it. Um, and I'm very excited to see where they go with the turtles being um, public f- from such a young age and essentially being, I assume they're probably con- going to continue to be superheroes as, right. you know, they're still known by the mass public. Um, but yeah, uh, what else? Uh, I'm also very interested to see how they're going to handle the Shredder who was teased I... at the end because um, mm-hmm. in every version that i've seen so far shredder and splinter usually have some type of connection either if Mm -hmm. it's because you know sometimes splinter is the rat of hamato yoshi who is who who, um used to work with the shredder as a part of the foot clan or or splinter is literally hamato yoshi turned into a rat um and in this one he was just a rat and he it seems like he has absolutely no connection to Hamato Yoshi maybe they could retcon it and or maybe they always had the plan of ha- to say he was a he was um Hamato Yoshi's pet rat but I don't know the way they set up his origin in, it, in this it doesn't feel like he was ever anyone's pet he was just a regular rat um, right so I feel like they're gonna do something very different with uh with Shredder in this one and um if I had to guess I feel like uh Shredder and the Foot Clan are probably gonna be more like mercenaries if not the Foot Clan just doesn't exist and it's just Shredder and he's just a mercenary and he's going to be, you know, hired by uh, Cynthia Utrum, as, as um, she's called, to go and uh, hunt down the turtles. Which, I mean, I guess, spoiler alert to you, do you know what Utrams are? <laughs> I don't, but, I mean, I'm not I'm not pressed about. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, again, I said spoiler alert on, but, like, I mean, maybe they could do something different, but it's a little too on the nose that her name is Cynthia Utrom. Utrom is the name of the race that Krang is. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. And okay. you know they're known for hiding themselves in robot bodies inside right, their bellies. Right, right. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the next movie we find out that she's just a robot, and inside her stomach is this weird, goopy brain monster from <laughs> from Dimension X, and they're gonna try to invade Earth or something like that. Mm. So yeah, um, or maybe they just do something completely different with the character, and they just gave that as her last name as a reference. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, and this. Uh, no, go ahead. I was gonna say it's funny, um, kind of a tangent sidebar thing. But um, after watching it, I was like, uh, me and my friends went out to eat. We were gonna get pizza, and then had the worst pizza experience I think I've ever had. And I think that might be, I, I, it's a sign of some sort. I don't know if it's about turtles or about like the 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 modern pizza economy, but either way, it was horrible. Um, the, the modern the pizza economy. <laughs> Like, 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 you know, we were in Towson, so, like, and you know how Towson is, uh, area-wise, very gentrified. Yeah, um, that's a, it's like a, it's basically like a college town. Yeah, and it really shows. The pizza place we were in, I won't get too into it, because, again, it's a tangent sidebar, but I will say that, um, all the music playing in there was Kids Bop covers, so do with that what you will. <laughs> were you at Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> No, no, it was a it was a pizza in tap house, which was really insane to me because they're serving beer on tap, and then there's just kids pop music. No, that makes sense because it is by uh you know, Towson University, and it's probably just a bunch of college kids in there. I was like, play some kids pop, play some of that like, old school kids pop that we would listen to when we were kids. <laughs> and it definitely was old school kids pop. It was like Gangnam Style and stuff like that. And I was like, what the hell? It was it was really weird. But um, yeah. Uh, Splinter in this movie, Splinter and the Turtles learned how to fight through uh, kung fu films, which is uh, a very different and a very funny um, take on uh, how they you know learn ninjutsu. And uh, it's it's especially funny because of course Jackie Chan is very famous for being in Hong Kong China, um, martial arts films, and he's right. voicing uh, Splinter in this. And uh, in his fight scene when he goes to save the turtles. He's uh, using the environment to fight, which is something that um, Jackie Chan is known for in all of his movies is to to be kind of like a bumbling idiot and, you know, not always just dominating the fight. And sometimes he's getting hit. Sometimes he's getting hurt. He's falling to the ground. He's using the environment and grabbing ladders and just stuff in the environment to fight with. And that's everything that they did with um, Splinter in that fight. So I think that's really cool. Um, that's very cool. Yeah. The thing is, because he's kind of old and even though he's shown to be better than the turtles I, I wonder if he's gonna get better or if he's just gonna if he's like reached his limit because mm-hmm. i kind of want him to like get even better um mm-hmm. somehow like maybe somehow he gets something that makes him even younger or stronger or somehow he just trains and gets better and stronger um right because i because i want to i want him to fight shredder but i don't want it to be like a wash mm-hmm and because I feel like this version of Splinter just isn't as strong as I'm used to Splinter being, even though he's still as strong in Turtles. Right, right, right. And that lack of like actually being like a an actual ninja's rat kind of just removes, um, you know, how good of a fighter he usually is. But again, mm-hmm. I'm interested in this different take and how they go with it. No, I'm not necessarily yeah. mad at it. I will say, I think my favorite part was uh, Ice Cube's performance as Superfly. Oh, yeah. I think I mentioned he that was... last episode, but I, I wasn't able to go into detail. Did. It was so good. It was so good. Like I, I loved the like stereotypical New Yorker turned up to a thousand. Yeah, but and it's in funny. Such a way. It's funny because yeah, he's from sense. L.A. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, he's from L.A. <laughs> Killed it though. <laughs> that man the is from man? that man is from the West Coast, but he was playing a uh, uh, a New York gangster, which is funny. <laughs> Dang, and good that, job. Yeah, it was, and it worked. Even though um, I could still tell a little bit of the the alienness to it, it still felt New York, which was funny. Um, Very much so. And yeah, no, he was just good. He worked really well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he was easily the best performance in that movie. Like, it was yeah. a, there was a bunch of like celebrity casting in this, but they all did a good job. Um, yeah, and it's also very different for pretty much dang near all of the turtles villains in this to ha- to be their friends now. Mm-hmm. And I don't see that changing unless they get like mind controlled or something, which I wouldn't be surprised if like Krang somehow mind controls them all and forces them to fight the turtles. But right. um, since they're all friends with the turtles now, um, 
I'm very curious how they, you know, build up villains from here on out. Especially mm-hmm. since um, they plan on making a... Uh, I, I might have mentioned this in an episode or two ago, but they're making an anime series based off Ooh. of that called Tales of the TMNT. Very excited for that. I hope it's in the same 3D art style. Um, yeah, same. That'd be really cool. And I also want them to do the same thing with Spider-Verse too. Because I'm tired of seeing, like, uh, like I don't need the multiverse anymore. I just want to see all of these characters in their original universes. I want two things. Right. I want a, a Miles to have his own show where he's just doing stuff in his universe. And maybe Miles, a coin pops in every now and again. And then I want a Spider-Verse anthology series that's just called Spider-Verse that has episodes dedicated um, to different universes. Right. And Gwen is getting her own show. That is confirmed to be happening. Nice. So, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be animated. So, I'm excited for that. Because I've been reading nope, nope. the Gwen comics a lot, and they're good. So, I'm excited to see that. Hmm. But yeah, you know, there was some racism happening about April's design. Oh, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, we're not going to focus on that because they're wrong, yeah. obviously. You know. Oh, yeah, dead wrong. Instead, let's just, just talk about the character designs in general. You know, the character designs are so asymmetrical. <laughs> I love and, it. And don't adhere to any traditional standards of beauty at all. Like, every single character it looks ugly in a way. And dirty. Yeah. And grimy. And it's the, the prettiest, ugliest art style I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, like, it definitely, like... Even the humans it, have it, weird proportions. Yeah, and it took some getting used to, but I I really enjoyed that about it. Because it's like the... It, it made it feel more real in a sense. It's like, oh, everyone isn't like tall, blonde, and beautiful or whatever, or like adhering to some stupid beauty standard. It's like, these are people that look like people. Yeah. <laughs> and so it made me get more attached like to the story and to the characters because it's like, yeah, I know people that look like this in a, in a way. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to get the art book for this movie. Um, it comes out in October. I haven't pre-ordered it yet, and I'm trying to. I'm like, should I? And I, I will. <laughs> like, I already pre-ordered. What is it? Well, I pre-ordered the Across Spider Verse book, but I haven't now. Still haven't read it yet. I still haven't read the the the, the art book for the first movie yet either. Even though I have both of them, because I want to finish reading my God of War Ragnarok art book first, which I just haven't gotten around to yet. Right, right. Um, I'm slowly reading it, but I haven't finished it yet. But yeah, um, this movie was great. Oh, oh the music. I talked about music a little bit last time, but the music is great. Like you oh, heard, you heard all the all the New York hip hop they played. Like I said, I did, I did, um, and I loved it. Like I said, <laughs> "Andy Up" is such it's one of the hypest songs in the existence of man. And like I said, that day I had coincidentally I didn't tell you the name of the song that I had oh. said that I said that I heard a song that day that showed up in a movie, but I didn't tell you the name of the song because I didn't want to spoil it for you. It was um, "What's Up." What okay. I for whatever reason was listening to "What's Up." randomly and then next thing you know mondo gecko started playing uh what's what's up in the car when they were on the highway the hey uh, that song yep 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 yep. and i was just like this is so random i was just listening to this song (laughs) why are they playing this in a movie did they read my mind i think my favorite part was how it transitioned from the original song to the 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 he-man version version. and i want to know who did they talk to to get the rights to that I like I, mean, I need people, to know the people who made the parody naturally. Well, they they probably it probably had to be the people who made the parody and the original song people. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. granted, if you got the rights to the original song, then it's probably going to be a lot easier to get the rights to the parody, parody, especially if you just talk to people who made the parody. Right. Um. But yeah, I thought that was hilarious when I was like, okay, there's the original song, and then I then then I was like, wait, that's not the original song anymore. <laughs> that's the He Man <laughs> version. <laughs> With the man, I have watched the he-man version so many times that as soon as the drums kicked in i'm like you have oh, yeah. got to be kidding i definitely heard the, the he-man version way more than the original yeah but, same but it was the original <laughs> version that i was listening to earlier that day right right right. which right. was just coincidental yeah. and the up i was listening to earlier that week so it was just so hilarious that coincidentally two songs that i had listened to recently had showed up all right I think I love the most that like they the original they, score is great too. I just want to add. Oh that. yeah, the original score is oh, amazing, yeah. and I want to see it again because uh, I haven't seen it since that first time, and I've been trying to go see it with some friends, but I don't know what they're doing. They're just not responding back. I might have to just go see it again by myself or just with one other friend. I was about to say yeah, you it, it, you'd probably be better off, but I will say I love that for the soundtrack, like they especially for some of the like more action packed scenes in air quotes, like they used hip hop rap that was 
kind of laid back, all things oh, yeah. considered. They used uh, was really... it no diggity when they were going around trying to get yeah. information on Superfly. That's exactly what I was thinking of when um, making that point, and I thought that was really cool because like there you could use something real aggressive and like in your face, but like the chill, low back, no diggity made like made the scene. Something that would always would... be funny to me mm-hmm. is when they play a song in a movie or show where like it's not like a mature show but it's like a song when you hear it and go they chose this song that they're gonna have to bleep and cut so many words like when they were playing give me the loot i was like okay i guess the chorus works when they're when they're stealing all the stuff from the stores that they have stuff to eat but like right any biggie small songs is gonna have to be censored to hell <laughs> right and he says some wild stuff in that song. He does. He does. He does. It's crazy. Not, but there's a whole lot. There's, a, there's the weirdest censor in that song, in the, even the explicit version of Gimme the Loot, where mm-hmm. he's talking about robbing a mother with a kid. <laughs> and he says something about, I can't remember exactly, but it's the weirdest bleep of a word that's not even really a bad word when every other bad word isn't bleeped out. I can't remember what it is exactly, but it's so funny. Mm. But uh, what else do you have to say before we, we uh, move on? That's it. I just really love the movie. I would go see it again. I'm not. I'm usually not a rewatcher, but I would go see that movie again. Okay. Uh, yeah. When I love the movie, I go see it more than once, unless it's long. Like I, I like Mission Impossible, but it was like almost three hours long. I'm not seeing that again until it's on digital. Um, Real. 